Today we, um, we continue our series, uh, Broken But Not Defeated, and uh, the topic today that we'll be dre- addressing is, um, is pain. And this is a very common to- topic. Um, it's something that you have experienced since you were born. Um, you probably didn't even remember, well, we, nobody remembers, right, when they were born, but certainly you experienced pain when you were born. The image that you're looking at um, just kind of pictures for us the places within our body that experience pain. And uh, that image definitely reflects all the areas of my body in which I experience pain. I brought along my brown paper bag. My daughter, who's an NP, tells me um, that um, often, before she has patients come to uh, visit her at the doctor's office, that she asks them to clear out their cabinet and put all their meds in a brown bag so that the physician knows everything that is going on. So I brought along my my brown bag this morning along with uh, a few different meds. Did you know there's 19, there's over 19,000, 19,000 FDA approved meds to be used in the United States to deal with pain. 19,000. I was astounded by that number. I had no idea about that. But I certainly know pain, and you know pain. We all know pain. And I found myself in pain last Friday. Um, I had been out in the... um, in the, in, the, in the garden and in the backyard, I was doing some raking, I was doing some planting. I was doing this in the morning in, in anticipation of some fishing in the afternoon. I enjoy trout fishing. The, sto- the, the stream I was headed to was being stocked at 11. So this was the strategic plan. I get done with all of my yard work and I go in the house and I start to feel tingling in my arm from my shoulder down. And, and then it begins to get numb. And then in particular, the pain um, re- just uh, is, is, fo- is focused in my wrist. And like, I, I, can't, I go to turn the doorknob and I can't even turn the doorknob. And I'm like, what is going on? It was like, it happened so suddenly and I didn't do anything that I was aware of to cause this pain that I was feeling. Um, like, um, like, probably like you, my mind began to go to all kinds of bad places. Like, you know, am I having a stroke? Am I having a heart attack? Should I call my wife who's in Michigan? Um, what do I do here? And so I went to the counter or to the, uh, to the cabinet and I dug out the ibuprofen, right? And, um, and I took a few uh, ibuprofen pills and I said, that'll, that'll, that'll do, Kirk, because I'm going fishing, right? And, and I went fishing and, and I still, I felt this, numbness all day long. Uh, Last Saturday, we had the 5K, um, and I remember waking up and feeling it still all through my shoulder and my wrist, and took a few more ibuprofen, ran the race. After the race, I felt so much better, and I've been doing great since. I don't know. Pain! You know pain. I know pain. We all know pain. We don't like it. I also have with me um, some I don't know if it's osteo, osteo, biflex. Um, This is triple strength. It's got glucosamine as well as uh, turmeric. And it's the turmeric that I think is really the... The, the, the powerful ingredient in there. Turmeric helps to reduce inflammation. But um, this, is a me- this is like a supplement that I take every day. Uh, so 20 years ago, I saw a knee doc um, because I have uh, a torn ACL. I had a torn ACL. I had ACL repair way back in 1990. And so in the early 2000s, uh, dealing with pain there, I went to the doc and, and um, he said, yeah, you got all kinds of arthritis, all kinds of things. You should stop running. He told me that 20 years ago. I still run. Um, I'm not following the doctor's advice, uh, which gets me in trouble sometimes. But this is incredibly helpful for my joint pain. Um, And so I take that every day. Um, Sometimes I have acid reflux. You know, sometimes that's the result of stress in life. But um, other times it's because it's just like you're you're born and it's uh, your, what, hereditary? Right? You, get, you inherit it from the DNA from your parents. And, and so I sometimes have to use Tums, but I found this product to be really good. Pepsing GI, um, it's not ADA approved, but man, that, thing, that stuff works. 
um, it does something with creating a coating on your stomach. And, and so I utilize that drug. What else is in here? Um, so that's like Tylenol that goes along with the Advil. And then, you know, it's allergy season. And I don't usually do allergy meds too often, but I have this, this allergy season. I did read that it's like one of the worst um, times or one of the worst seasons this year. And uh, what is this? This is... Sir design, I don't know what, it's probably a, you know, a offshoot of Allegra or something or whatever the um, common uh, name drug is to help with that. And so drugs, right? We use drugs to address the pain issues that we have. You have pain, I have pain, we all have pain, we all experience pain. And it's so common that we don't really even think about it. I was thinking about this this week, like, it happens so often in our day. We stub our toe. We, we, we hit our funny bone. Uh, we stick our hand under the sink water and it's too hot. We, we accidentally touch the burner that's too hot. We stub our toe. We step on a piece of broken glass. We, um, we prick our finger while we're in the garden with a, with a rose bush. I mean, we experience pain so often that I, I think we don't, even, we don't even really think about it. It's just, it's so normal. It's such a, a natural part of life. And then there are those times when the pain is really excruciating. And those are the times we think about it, and those are the times we talk about it. And we, 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 we stand, stand out in the lobby and share our stories. And even this morning, the, the number of people I talked to just this morning who were sharing the depth of their pain, somebody who was planning to go on the um, Algonquin backpacking canoeing trip with me, He's just pulled out of the trip because he's got severe, severe, severe back pain. Almost debilitating back pain. When you, you, if any, any of you have back pain, you know, you know what, that's, what that's like and how it, it just causes you to curl up into a fetal position. I was talking with somebody else this past week who is, has been struggling for six months with vertigo, crystals in the ear and all this kind of stuff and, and trying, to, trying to, to, to navigate and negotiate that pain. I talked to somebody else in the lobby, uh, pain from Cancer, ongoing cancer from year after year after year. Pain. There's not only pain in the physical body, but there's pain that we experience emotionally, right? And so we as a church family are grieving with the Wells family, Nicole's father who suddenly died last Friday. With uh, the Granko family, Donna whose mom just died suddenly a couple weeks ago. As people, we experience, we experience pain. And what we're going to look at this morning from Scripture is somebody who experienced pain, the same pain that you experienced, the same pain that I experienced, the same pain that is so common to all of us that we live life just so used to it, and uh, yet in the 21st century, we come up with all kinds of 19,000 different ways to address our pain because nobody likes it. Psalm 31 is the text that we'll be looking at this morning. We're going to jump into the middle of the text uh, as we continue our series, Broken But Not Defeated. And so we are broken. Pain breaks us, right? Pain hurts. But we don't have to be defeated by the pain that we're in. That doesn't mean that it takes away our pain. It doesn't mean that it diminishes the pain but it does mean that we don't have to be defeated by the pain. Psalm 31, we're going to jump in in the middle of uh, the psalm and begin at verse 9. And this is uh, is David who's writing. Um, This is David who's crying out to God. This is David who is expressing his pain. Follow me as I read, beginning in verse 9. Be merciful to me, O Lord. Be merciful to me, O Lord. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes, they grow weak with sorrow. My soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish. My years, year after year after year, by groaning, and my strength fails because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. 
And because of all of my enemies, I'm the utter contempt of my neighbors. I'm a dread to my friends. And those who see me on the street, complete strangers, they flee from me. I'm forgotten. I'm forgotten by them. As though I was dead, I've become like broken pottery. For I hear the slander of many. There is terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say that you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me and let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. There's a lot of pain that David uh, expresses here in his life. I'm going to make two observations from what he has to say and then two application points for what to do in our pain. So the first observation, it's just really simple. It's not really that novel. Matter of fact, it's so common that we don't talk about it. But it is just simply this. We as people, we experience pain. All right, this is David. He experiences pain. And he expresses this pain, right? He, says it's, he, he defines it um, in terms of distress or anguish or groaning or affliction. David has pain. And you say, well, this is not very profound. <laughs> and it's true, it's not very profound. It's not very profound at all uh, because, again, it's so common to all of us. We experience it so frequently and so regularly. But maybe what is profound is that it's in the Bible. Um, it's in the Bible as pain. Somebody who is following after God, somebody who is inspired by God to write, experiences pain. And he tells us about his pain. Now, what might be profound about that, or what's very interesting, or I find interesting about it, is that God doesn't hide it. He doesn't cover it up. He doesn't try and pretend as though pain is something that he doesn't have authority over or control over, and because he's not big enough or strong enough, could, can like isolate it or cover it over or push it aside. He doesn't do anything to try and minimize it to, so that people don't ask that question. Aren't you good, God, and aren't you powerful, and yet you're allowing this pain? So it's very interesting that, that God gives us these words of a man who experiences pain. What's interesting, too, is if you read your Bible from that perspective, that pain is normal, that pain is experienced by all people, you will read story after story after story of people in Scripture who experience pain. Matter of fact, all the stories in Scripture are filled with some kind of difficulty, some kind of challenge, some kind of brokenness, some kind of pain. And that becomes an interesting way to read and to understand Scripture. That from Genesis 3 to Revelation 20, it's all about brokenness. It's all about pain. It's all about things not going the way that they're supposed to go. I find that helpful and profound that God tells us, or God gives it to us, or God exposes and lets us to understand that life is broken, and brokenness gives us pain. Who is uh, that very deep and profound uh, theologian, interesting writer who gave us um, some good stories, C.S. Lewis, who writes this in his book, The Problem of Pain. He says, we can ignore pleasure, but pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures. 
He speaks in our conscience, but he shouts. He shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Fascinating. Lewis is saying God isn't trying to hide pain. He isn't trying to push it under the carpet. He isn't trying to deny it. He isn't trying to walk away from it. God, God actually allows us to see it. Not only does he allow us to see it and to experience it, he uses it to communicate. It's a megaphone. It's his big megaphone. It's the, perhaps the most profound way that God speaks to people. And you say, well, how is that possible? Or how does God use pain to do that? Or, or, or what do you mean by that? Well, Lewis goes on to talk about how um, all pain is the result of evil. All pain is the result of, back to our title of our series, something that is broken, something that isn't working the way that it was supposed to work. And so Genesis 1 and 2 tells us that in the beginning God created, and when he created, everything was good. As a matter of fact, it was very good. It was perfect. Everything was good. Nothing was broken. It all functioned right. There was no pain. But then Genesis 3 came. And as a result of Genesis 3, as a result of sin, as a result of rejecting God, as a result of going against God, as a result of not being obedient, we have brokenness, right? That's what brokenness is. It's something not functioning the way that it's supposed to. That's what sin is. It's behaving in a way that you're not supposed to. And brokenness produces pain. And so God uses the pain then the pain is a megaphone to draw us to himself. Lewis goes on, he talks in his book, The Problem of Pain, he talks about how either pain will either draw you to God or will push you away from God. And some of you are, are, are listening um, online. Some of you are here present because you are experiencing pain. You don't know God, but you are checking him out because you're looking for help. That's, that, that is a common response. Those of us who are here who are followers of God, we've all experienced that pain. We've all struggled with that same question. And we've come down on the side of saying, we believe there is a good, powerful, loving God who steps into our broken world full of pain, takes the pain upon himself, the weight of it, the result of it, so that someday we can get out of it and live in a place without any pain. So David's pain, which he utters here, is very profound. It's helpful to know that as people, we experience pain, all of us, and that God is at work underneath it, behind it, drawing us to himself, to that which is good, helping us to see what's not broken, what is right. Because everybody knows pain isn't good. Everybody responds the same to pain. We all move away from it. That's why there's 19,000 drugs in the U.S. to deal with pain. Because nobody likes it. It's wrong. It's not the way it's supposed to be. God is good. There's nothing wrong with God. He's perfect. He's right. Everything is right in him. So David's help, David helps us to understand that as people, we experience pain. Now, the second important point or observation that we can take from this text about David's pain is that the pain is diverse, right? The pain that David experiences is physical, it's emotional slash spiritual, and then it's relational. He talks about the pain in all three of these areas of his life. So um, again, back to, uh, to, to verse 9, if we look at um, the way that he talks about his pain, he, he specifically he talks about his eyes. His eyes are weak, he says. He's, and they've grown weak because of internal pain, because, because of tears. He's, he's, he's grown weak from crying. Not only does he talk about his eyes, but he talks about his strength his strength that is failing. <laughs> you know, y yesterday, um, fished in the morning, came home, did some more yard work, theme at this time of the year, right? We all are doing this. And 
I have another project that I need to do. And I'm just like, I'm just too tired. And, and as, I'm, as I'm thinking about this, you know, I can make myself go do it or I can just go in the house and take a break. I, the next thought in my mind was like, th- this is so not who I used to be. Because who I used to be was on to the next project, got a job to do, got to get it done. And you know what? I went inside yesterday and I didn't do the job. And I'll have to get to it another time this week because my strength is failing. I guess part of it is getting older, right? And David is saying, hey, my strength has failed. I am feeling something physically. I feel stuff in my body. Secondly, he talks about um, feeling it in his soul, right? He, he says, my soul, then he uses this phrase, and my body are filled with grief. My soul and my body. And then, end, verse 10, he talks about his bones that are growing weak. It's interesting word selection that doesn't translate very well into English what the Hebrew is. So, when he talks about his bones, we tend to think of the structural, you know, the, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the skeleton, right? The skeletal makeup of who we are as people, the bones. And the, the Hebrew word means, yes, that, but it means more than that. It means really the entire part of who I am as a person, not just my bones, but all my organs, as well as me emotionally, and spiritually, the immaterial part of me. And, and it's, it's the same for the word body. It's, it's, it's the totality of the human condition. It's all of me, David is saying. It, it, my, my, my soul, the inside of me is growing weak. It, it, it is experiencing grief. All parts of me are in pain. What what kind of comes to mind in in this is is those times when you are in intense pain, and you you probably, every one of us has probably experienced intense pain. When we're in intense, intense pain, whether it be, we're we're just, we're just zapped from some kind of illness, or we have some kind of cancer, or some kind of broken thing in our body, we're generally not very nice people, right? Uh, we, we, We just kind of lay there in groaning and in pain and can I help you? No, leave me alone. You know, is there anything I can do for you? No, just get out of here, right? But I'm just going to lay here and groan, right? I mean, this is the, this is the kind of pain that, that David is speaking of. And, and you can identify that we, we all experience this full body kind of pain. And then lastly, it's very interesting. He goes from talking about physical pain everything inside of me hurting to now talking about relational pain. So it's very curious and interesting how he, 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 he switches from, from, from talking about himself physically and spiritually to talking about him, himself relationally. So verse uh, 11, because of all my enemies. So now he's talking, these, these are people, right, in his life. I'm in utter contempt. So, so this, is, this is pain I'm experiencing, I'm, I'm, my neighbors, they, these are, this is a relational connection. People who live next door to me, they, I, they, I, they, I'm in utter contempt with them. My friends, these are people who are, who are, who are close to me. Um, they, they dread me. They, they don't even want to be around me. Um, n- not only my neighbors and my friends, but, but the strangers on the street, they run away from me. They flee from me. And then, and then he, he talks about how he feels as though he's completely forgotten by all people. He's just living a life completely alone, and he's, um, he, he's like a piece of broken pottery. You know, he's, a, he's of no use to anybody. Relational pain. And we all experience this too. Um, the pain that hurts our heart, right? Because we have been snubbed, or we have been ghosted, right? That's a, that's a new term that made it into the dictionary in, in 2017. For those of us who are a little bit older, I, I, I learned that term from my, my children who, who told me that, oh, w- w- there, people aren't responding to your text or not responding to your email. Oh, you got ghosted. Like, what are you talking about? Ghosted? Like, what do you mean? 
Well, it means that they're, they're not responding to you. They, they probably saw it, but they don't want to answer you. They don't, they don't have anything they want to say to you. And actually, um, ghosting to its extreme is the, the complete cutting you off. Right? They cut you out of your, the, your, your life um, uh, uh, technologically, if they, uh, any of the social media platforms. Right? You're, you're, just, you're just, no, we're, you're ghosted, man. You're, you, are, you are eliminated, wiped out of, of my life. Um, or or um, being snubbed, you, you, you go someplace, you're, uh, and, and, and people don't look at you, they don't look at you in the eye, they don't interact with you. Matter of fact, they, you're standing there in line, and they talk to the person behind you, and, and, and look around you, and, and, and that does something to you um, emotionally, relationally. You get the silent treatment from your spouse that does something to you, right? And uh, so there's a book that's been written, Todd Rose, Collective Illusions, and he, he talks about the effects of, of relational pain. He notes that there's an entire area of our brain, I'm not even going to try to pronounce all of that, that is constantly on the lookout. This is interesting. There's a part of our brain that's constantly on the lookout for pain. <laughs> our, our brain is constantly looking out for being snubbed and being rejected, right? For even the smallest hint of negative judgment. And then he says this, a wounded heart can hurt just as much as a broken leg. And so you, you walk into a social environment, and if you experience any kind of wounding, and your, your antenna is already up, anytime in any social environment, you go to work, you're out in the neighborhood, you, you go to, the, you go to your, uh, your, your athletic event, uh, you walk into a gathering on Sunday morning, and, and you just intuitively, this is how we are as people, we walk in looking to be hurt. <laughs> how crazy we are. But that's how our body works, is what he's saying. And then when, we, when we, we get snubbed or we get ghosted, it hurts us relationally. He goes on to say that psychological research suggests that even the, the mildest snub can cause distress. Our internal sensors are so attuned to rejection that we feel pain even when it is remote and clearly artificial. And he goes on to talk about cyber ostracism, being ignored or even excluded online produces a similar physical and emotional response. Once it's switched on, our ostracism alarm only appears to have one setting, and that's like full blast. Relational pain. David experienced relational pain. You experienced relational pain. We experienced rel relational pain. Pain. So again, the two observations from this text are people. We experience pain. The second observation is that our, we, we experience the pain total in, in, in us totally. Our body, us emotionally, physically, spiritually, and then us relationally. We experience pain. And God uses that pain to do something in us. Now, two, two steps or two things to do, um, and this is the repeated application that we have seen in every single text that we've looked at throughout this series. The first is this, trust God. Trust God. This is what he says. But I trust in you, O Lord. I trust in you, O Lord. My, my time, my, my life, in essence, everything about me is in your hands. This is very profound. I'm trusting in you, God. Why is it so profound? Because often as people, we trust in our doctors, we trust in the internet, we trust in our friends, their experience with their pain, which by the way, Caleb, thanks for the tip. Last week, 5K, talking about some pain in my leg. Oh, IT band, you said, stretch out by cross. It works. It's helped me a lot. Thank you. I'm, I'm continuing to stretch doing that. It's making a difference. Um, where was I? with all of this, right? Oh, we listen to the advice of friends, right? We trust in their wisdom and their insight. Uh, but then it comes down to the question is, well, do, we ever, do, we ever, do we ever trust in God? Do we, do we think about God? Do we, do we ask him for help? Now, the reality is, is all people, we, we, we live by faith. We're living by faith. And the question is, what is we're trusting in? And, and I've said this multiple times in this series, right? Everybody lives by faith. When we're broken, it, because pain does this, it's a megaphone. What do you, what's your response to pain? I got a, I got a, a message this past week from somebody who's responding to our reels. So, so some of you are like, what is a reel? Hey, that's okay. 
read, read your newsletter, and in the newsletter, it will talk about YouTube. Um, and some of you are like, what is YouTube, right? YouTube plays videos, right? Uh, but Laura has been taking our messages and putting them into like one minute sound bites. Many of you get them, many of you don't. But they're going literally around the world over 10 different countries. Right? And this past week, I got a response from somebody we think is probably in India. And the person was commenting to the story that I shared last week of my son being diagnosed with leukemia and his death. And, and the comment was this. It was like, like, there's pain everywhere. There's brokenness everywhere. I see it. Animals feel it, experience it. People experience it. How can you believe in a God? You're like, I, I, I have the answer, right? I'm an atheist. That's the solution. So you can go to our YouTube thing, you can read the comment, and you can also read my comment back. And my comment back, and how do you deal with pain? Is well, you, You're putting your faith somewhere. You put your faith in there is no God. You put your faith in a doctor. You put your faith in some religion. You put, you, this is, we trust something. That's, that's what we do as people when we're dealing with brokenness and when we're dealing with pain. The question is who, what? The application here that David says is, I'm going to trust in you, God, who I cannot see. Just like I'm going to trust in you, a non-God. Oh, there is no God that I cannot see. Or just like I'm going to trust in you, my thousands of gods, like Hinduism believes in, uh, to, to take care of this problem. This God, I'm going to trust in... David says, I'm going to trust in you, the one true God, who is all-powerful, all-loving, who looks at this and says, yeah, you guys got a problem with trying to figure this out. You'll never understand it, but just trust me. Put your trust in me that I have you in your pain. I have you in your pain. Trust me. Now, I, I thought a little bit about this um, this past week and how pain is a lot like a weight. Um, and since we have lots of weight and lots of pain, I only brought three things along. Um, so, in, in life is like this backpack, right? And into our life goes, goes this weight of this, this pain, and the backpack gets heavier and heavier, right? And so, as a person, I'm, 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 I'm living my life, I'm, I'm carrying this weight of my pain along with me. And as I was thinking about the application of what David is saying here, and I was thinking about myself personally and how on Monday I got this phone call from uh, the realtor who said the dumpster is still in the driveway. And then, so this house we're listing on Thursday, supposed to be listed on the market on Thursday. So my mom's house that we're selling, that we're helping her with. It's in New York and, and I live in Pennsylvania. And the dumpster was supposed to be gone like two weeks ago. The dumpster's in the driveway. Oh, got to deal with this. Got to call waste management. Pain in the neck to deal with waste management. Bad press for waste management. 30 minutes trying to solve this problem. Did it, it was ridiculous. Finally, I got it scheduled for Wednesday. Get another call from the realtor on Wednesday. The dumpster's still there. The dumpster didn't go away. Really frustrating. It's another way, right? Not only that, we get a text from the neighbor. Tree down, major windstorm. Tree down in the front yard. The big, massive tree down in the front yard. House is supposed to go on the market on Thursday. This is a weight in my life. This is a lot of weight in my life. This is a stress in my life. And I found myself as I was dealing with this, like this is heavy. And I was like, what am I going to do with it? What can I do with this? Right? You contact the, the realtor. You contact the people that you can contact. I was like, you know what? I just need to trust in God. Worship team, come on up. I, I just got to trust in God. This is what I got to do. I just got to, I got to trust in God. And, and when you trust in God, this is what happens, right? The weight comes out of the pack. All right, it doesn't mean that the pain goes away necessarily, the frustration goes away. But I'll tell you what, it sure gets a lot lighter when I just go, God, I'm going to trust in you. My life is in your hands. I can't change the situation. I can't do anything with the situation. I can't make this pain necessarily go away. But by giving it to you, it's like it comes out of my life. I lay it at his, his feet. Last observation. Not only trust in God, but, but do that, right? Call out to God. <laughs> Ask God to intervene, to, to bring his goodness to bear upon, upon your life. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing that David says here. He says, God, let your face shine on me. <laughs> Your face, his face 
refers to his goodness, his love, his mercy, his presence. God, may all of the goodness of who you are come and, come and shine on me amidst this backpack of hurt and pain and junk that I'm dealing with. There's two other, there's two other things he says in there. God, would you take it away? God, would you deal with it? God, God, make my pain go away. And sometimes this is what we need to do as people to summarize this whole message. You experience pain. You experience pain everywhere. God uses that pain. Trust in him. You're trusting in something. Trust in him. Talk to him. Ask him to help you. Worship team, lead us in this final song. Would you stand with us? I was reading a book for school the other week. And it was by C.S. Lewis. It's called Screw Tape Letters. And it talks about the demons and how they switch us and move us. And um, they say at one point that our lowest valley moments is what they take pleasure in. And that if they drink it like wine, they, they're so happy and excited when we're in our lowest depths away from God. And um, I personally am really competitive. I was just thinking about this when Pastor Kirk was talking. And um, I don't know if you guys know Jeremy Walker in here. He was injured. Um, that's 25% my fault. <laughs> but um, um, thinking, thinking about demons rejoicing in our pain just makes me just want to freaking praise the Lord all the more because like how dare they be happy in my sadness you know so um this is a song of praise that we're about to sing and let's like let's freaking make them screech in pain with our shout
minimize the, the depth of it. But I do want to remind us of what, what is said in Hebrews chapter 2 as you go out and let this be uh, where we go. The writer of Hebrews says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus who is the author and the perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured immense amount of of pain in the cross. Scorning its shame, and then he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Jesus experienced all the pain that you experienced too, and he defeated it. And this is the promise and the hope that we look to and we live to. In the meantime, it hurts, and it does hurt. Don't lose hope. Go Hope Community Church and share that with others. Have a good week. Let's give one last hand to all the moms. Let's go.